Dan Kinney has led more than 60 campus planning projects across the world. He is the primary author of Mission and Place, a book that should be required reading for all who care for campuses. This conversation is about the forces that have shaped the campus we see today and Dan's observations about the future. And I, I really think the things have really been uh, cultural and generational. have really been the things that have changed uh, campus planning mm -hmm. design. After World War II, uh, with the GI Bill, which mm -hmm. uh, brought this huge influx of, of st growth to campuses, uh, there was also a program for very low interest loans for higher education, so building buildings became very inexpensive and easy to do. Um, and uh, then there was the uh, Sputnik era, where the federal government was now putting tremendous amount of money in research, and that research was largely happening on college campuses. So when you put those things together, uh, colleges now in the 50s and 60s uh, needed to accommodate significant amount of growth uh, and new facilities. Uh, and there were two challenges. One is the, the, they found it convenient to just find a place to put a building. Uh, we lost a lot of the basic principles of campus organization, campus structure that had been uh, very functional over time, but uh, all of a sudden we needed all these buildings and if we had a vacant piece of land, we put a building in it. We also had the, the period of brutalist architecture on campuses and they were really about object buildings, not about creating campus and creating place. Uh, so the combination of plopping buildings down and having buildings that don't uh, create space uh, and create active ground floors uh, really started to deteriorate the quality of the things that, that we associate with college campuses. The other thing that was happening is we were getting bigger buildings. We were getting science buildings and engineering buildings and we did have in our hearts the cherished part of almost all of our campuses. Uh, the, the Oval uh, at Ohio State, the, the the academic campus at, at UVA, uh, the quad at Stanford, but we didn't know how to fit these large, bulky buildings into mm -hmm. those spaces in a way that wouldn't affect them. And so the, the solution was put them out, and particularly for the large land-grant research institutions that had hundreds of acres, uh, they would move them out. And then uh, we had to get in our car to get from one part of the campus to the other. So there were a whole bunch of things that were happening in that period of time that really uh, led to the, the deterioration of the quality of campus. And I think the next major generational change was the baby boom. Of course, it was a very large population uh, and uh, many of them going to college. So it was a large growth in, in, growth in enrollment. Uh, but it was also a period of suburban uh, growth and uh, that generation getting very used to having access to cars, uh, many of them having cars, uh, and that uh, acceptance of that low density, uh, auto-oriented living uh, really came to our campuses as well. And the idea that we had to accommodate the car and give it priority and provide surface parking for cars, which then forced us to move our buildings out as parking took up more and more land. Uh, we really uh, lost a lot of the quality of campuses in that period. And I think it was sort of towards the end uh, of that uh, period where we started to realize that we, between what happened uh, in the 60s and 70s and the 80s, required healing the campuses and thinking differently about how we grow campuses and how we use the tools we have, and infrastructure, and transportation, and buildings uh, to create and heal the campus. To heal. Really it is filling in uh, in a way that we can reconstruct uh, the connectivity, uh, we can reconstruct the density that allows us to have these kind of meaningful uh, intersections of, of faculty and staff and students and uh, creating spaces uh, on campus which is what the American campus is. The Gen Y generation brought with it uh, the influence of technology mm. to campuses. And so what's really happening with technology is uh, we're really changing uh, how we learn and how facilities need to support that learning behavior. The things that we're talking about that, that need to happen in learning, uh, hands-on learning, 
collaborative learning, interdisciplinary, intradisciplinary learning and research, uh, informal engagement uh, are all things that require a personal presence. So the question is how can the campus of the future really uh, facilitate that and accommodate that? We think it's thinking about mixed use and getting away from building these single purpose buildings, uh, increasing the density on campus, undoing what we did in the last three or four decades of spreading out, but density is not a bad thing, it's actually a good thing. Uh, creates these opportunities for people within a 10 minute walk to engage with each other. Uh, and flexibility. Uh, we need to build more flexible buildings and even our campus plans need to be more flexible because we don't know where technology is taking us. Uh, and then we need more spaces like maker spaces where, where we can be innovative, where we have students have more control of their own environment. The other things that I think are really important uh, in the future of the campus are going to be sustainability and resiliency. Now we've been talking about sustainability now for uh, you know probably the last 15, 20 years has really been a front burner item but we really need to think about it much more integrated in a much more synergistic way. We've been measuring sustainability largely by a building being LEED Silver or some sort of certification. We need to think about the whole campus and how the campus parts work together. Uh, campuses are a great place because usually the university owns all the land and all the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So some right. of these new ideas like eco-districts can be implemented on campuses today that can get us a long way in sustainability and certainly resiliency. I think the other really exciting trend I think today is, is the relationship between our campuses and our cities. And as I said, I think uh, Gen Y, uh, many of them don't have cars or you know, don't drive and they want to live in the city and take transit. Uh, and making this linkage between the host city and the campus and not thinking that everything has to be on the campus, mm -hmm. that the bookstore could be off campus or housing could be off campus and really blurring the lines between the campus and the city. We can talk about education, the value of, of the degree you to get, but the experience of being in that place, uh, particularly for young people at that point in their lives, is formative. And I think, as we said, as I said in the book, uh, we campuses and the people who operate campuses and develop campuses need to realize that this is an opportunity to uh, help people understand how to live their lives, whether it's sustainability. Or, or build great places uh, when they go on and move somewhere and maybe they're involved in making decisions about their city uh, that they've learned what a great place can be. So I'm, I'm optimistic about the campus of the future and I think we still have a lot of work to do, um, but uh, I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good future ahead. Dan Kinney is a principal in the San Francisco office of PAGE and was previously a principal with Sasaki Associates in Watertown. This conversation was recorded July 14, 2015 in Chicago.